I have a confession. Yes. As you may know, yes. I'm in a shared space right now. In a shared space with people who don't understand what it is to be on a webcam multiple times a day without a green screen um, or without looking like a cat. Um, and therefore, I walked in today and there was a, a tenement, if you will, of computers set up. Um, so I just moved it behind me. It's right there. And of course, right. Ella has decided that now she would like to leave the room. But um, That's okay. This you know, is the perfect time. Yeah. Like, you can get up. We're showing people. We're showing people your box. That's She's behind like, you. You clap too loud. That was rude. <laughs> I would like to leave now. That's literally what just happened. Sorry, dog. Goodbye. This. Bye. This is the real skinfessional people. This is real life. This is how <sighs> reality is. It's like when you your client gets on the bed and you're getting ready to do that facial, and they're like, "I I have to pee." <laughs> That's my dog. My dog is like your favorite and your most like clients ever. In one right little package. Right. <laughs> right. Also, I have I'm having a pool installed, and uh, if you listen really closely, you can um, hear the drilling in the background. But if that's not like cardboard boxes, computers, there's like some other bags over on this side, this side, I don't even know. Um, if that's not the most like 2020 thing ever, yeah, I don't really know what is. It's totally true. I mean, this is this is what it's like right now. This is like the life we're living. Uh, but, you know, being in somebody else's space, it's really hard. Like you go yeah. in, I'm sharing somebody's um, aesthetic room right now. And when you're not in your own space, you feel really uncomfortable. Like you're just like this, this these are not my things. This is not my space. I don't know where to put my stuff. It's really awkward. Yeah. I mean, if you were wondering too, if I suddenly became a judge. <laughs> no. <laughs> I love no, room parts. <laughs> I have not. Uh, yeah. But you know what? I think as entrepreneurs too, like we are adaptable, we can figure it out, we make it work. And um, in the meantime, I'll just be here blocking a cardboard box. <laughs> 100% true. Um, um, we hope that you all feel that way about your lives as well, that sometimes you just get on and that's just how it is. <laughs> sometimes you're just blocking a cardboard box so you can put on the face that like everything is fine, even though it's not. Oh my gosh. Totally true. Totally. The dog is trying to come back or the Too bad. I don't really know. Too bad. The show has started. The show must go on. That's Let's true. Let's do it. Hi, I'm Sybil Solon. I'm an esthetician and spa owner. And hi, I'm Alex Ellis. I'm a body nerd and wellness expert and we are business besties. And bosses. Running your own business, it's hard. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but we're terrible employees, so we're figuring it out. Um, I've already figured it all out, but we promise to share everything we know about what it takes to make six figures and beyond. And be brutally honest about what works and what totally sucks. Oh God. A bunch of it totally sucks. <laughs> Let's get started. Yes. I mean, I laugh every time because I'm like, God, there's never been truer words spoken other than yep. you week after week after week. And it seems more true every single week. <sighs> Welcome back to Skin Fashion on today's show. We're talking about the simple things you can do so that your job doesn't break your body. Because we believe you should be the only one to decide when it's time to quit, not your pain. No, 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 no. I think that there is just... Because I don't see it just in the entrepreneur space. I don't see it just in, you know, spa and like, you know, care businesses where we're using our bodies. Like mm -hmm. there's this overwhelming acceptance of yeah. pain and discomfort as we get older um, that personally I think is kind of bullshit. Yeah. I mean, if you don't know, guys, if you if this is your first time ever listening to us, Welcome. Alex... Right. And Alex specializes in pain. That's like what her jam is. Like her DLEOs. What is, what is you, what do you do, Alex? Well, I believe that life without pain is possible. Um, so right. I help people get stronger and more flexible and out of pain because again, I don't believe that it's something that you have to just accept. I think also like I'm listening to this book right now about the human body. It is such an amazing, miraculous, super cool thing. And pain is a sign that something is not working well, right? right? It's a red flag to be noticed. So I just like, let's acknowledge it and let's set you up so that you can move better and feel better so that you can just keep doing what you want to do on your terms, not having it be decided by pain. 
That's correct. And one of the things that I found really interesting when Alex was kind of like following her, kind of like finding her brand and finding the words that she needed to My use. Niche. Right. Her niche, <laughs> finding, finding the space for talking about pain was that people don't like to use the word pain. They don't mm-hmm. actually like, call it pain. They call it things like cranky and yeah. you know grouchy angry, upset grouchy so if you're sitting there being like i'm not in pain this isn't pain i just have like a little bit of you know my back gets uncomfortable at the end of the day or my feet just hurt a little bit or whatever sweetheart honeys you're in pain shut the fuck up <laughs> okay. so Sybil takes the uh the the less empathetic response but no it's just that it is um it's, it, it doesn't have to be something that just like comes along with yeah. being on your feet. You know, there is a difference between, hey, I'm tired because I've been working right. all day and my back is killing me because right. there's something going on. Right. Also, there's acute pain, which is like, oh, my God, I fell down and now something is broken and I'm crying or trying not to cry because it's so acute. I wish I was dead. And that like steady kind of like slow aching, maybe slight agony that you've just kind of gotten used to that your body is trying to turn off the sensors on because you've just learned to live with it day in and day out. Yeah. I also want to add on to this because oftentimes there's like something happened, right? Like an acute thing that happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, I twisted weird. Um, and my back has never been the same since. Right. Right. Um, after a certain period of time, like six weeks, if it's still bothering you, all of the healing that is going to happen is going to happen in that six week, six week period. Like that's what collagen does. That's what fascia does. That's what, that's what happens with healing after that six week period, the pain that's there isn't necessarily related to structural issues. And this is the same because again, if you're like, okay, yes, but I've had the MRIs and I have disc issues. I hear you. That's mm-hmm. real a hundred percent. But just because there's something structural doesn't mean you have to have pain. And just because you have pain doesn't mean that there's something structural that's like still healing. So we're still, you know, pain science is like this nebulous and like, you know, people are trying to figure out like, how does this work? But I think the important thing to know is that you don't have to just accept pain as a status quo because you're of a certain age, because you use your body for work or anything like that. Yes. And that is the important thing. So one of the things that I hear all the time from from and I, I speak to estheticians a lot and people who work with their bodies, right? Where so I'm going to call you be- beauty people, you know, um, body workers, is that you know, well, I work with my body, I'm going to be in pain. Like I work at the end of the day, of course, I'm going to be in pain. My body's going to break down. I hear these things over and over and over again, and it makes me upset because I've been doing this for 15 years, and yes, guys, I've had injuries. I, there are some days that I end and I'm, I'm uncomfortable and I've done something, but every time I think to myself, I was not protecting myself. I wasn't paying enough attention to my day. I didn't stretch well enough. I didn't do the things I was supposed to be doing to make sure that I wasn't in pain that day or that I was taking care of my body the way I should. Right. We are responsible for ourselves. Most estheticians in our field, we last three years. Mm. And one of the primary reasons, one of the primary reasons for that is actually because we blow ourselves out. Yeah. We, we injure wrists, fingers, hands, necks, backs, right? Those are the places that we blow ourselves out. And it's because we are not taught in school how to take care of our like tool, which is our body, mm-hmm. right? Our whole body is a tool. Mm-hmm. It's not just our hands. It's our whole body mm-hmm. is a tool. Yeah, that's so true. Because I had a conversation with a massage therapist this week who was like, Hey, I want to ramp up, you know, how many massages I'm doing, but like my body is hurting, what can I do? And it seems to me like it would be so important to teach you how to use your entire body, like you're saying as a tool, and yet it isn't taught and the people who have figured it out, or are aware of it and sharing that information is because they got hurt. Right. Yeah. And like, those are the people who are talking about it, but it just, we are so accepting of, of pain when we don't have to be. Right. So one of the first things I talk about when I'm discussing kind of new estheticians or estheticians who are like, oh yeah, no, I mean, my back is killing me at the end of the day. Or like my wrists are just like, they're just destroyed. When I hear the word destroyed, I worry because I have blown out my shoulder twice for my job. Mm-hmm. I have blown out thumbs. 
Okay. And so I know I've been with you. I've, I'm, I'm there. I hear what you're saying. Okay. Is I, I say, how have you set up your room to like work throughout the day? Because your body mechanics and how you set up your room are so incredibly vital. And everyone talks about how they set up their room for their client. Mm. But not enough people talk about how they set up their room for themselves. Mm. You're in that room all day long. Moving. All the time. Yeah, I mean, that's such a great point. Because exactly, you're the one moving around the room. The client comes in, lays on the bed. Right. So, I mean, I want them to be a com- client to be comfortable and I want the room to look okay, but how you are and act in that room is the most important thing. And so when I started out, I had a, somebody called a functional fitness therapist who came in and she essentially watched me walk around my room and do my job. I was like, okay, so this is how you need to set up your room. And this is where your body mechanics need to be. And so we worked on that. I don't think even people know what the heck that is. No, but I also, there's some, I also want to add, there are some like fundamentals of good movement that you can start implementing now without having to find or hire a functional movement. Well, and remember when I started 15 years ago, the internet, I mean, it was there, but like YouTube and stuff and the stuff that was out there, that's out there now, Alex, you didn't exist 15 years ago. I'm making videos. If you have, I mean, that's how I found you. Cause I was like, Ooh, I, I can learn this stuff. This is magic. I just think 15 years ago, all we had was Charlie bit my finger. Ow. Right? I mean, <laughs> we have so much more knowledge yeah. now. Yeah. So this information is out there. We, there. You can find so much more stuff than it's just like an ergonomic chair. You know, I mean, that was what was out there. Like you can have an ergonomic chair and an ergonomic desk, which those principles for what we do are not valid. No. Right? And also people who are using those are still in pain. Right. Because they're not what we need to do. So I want to talk for a second about like the equipment that I think that people need to, as estheticians need to think about. Mm -hmm. So I want to start with standing or sitting facials. Ooh, Mm -hmm. this is a big conversation. So is this like a hot topic? Well, I don't even know if anybody else talks about it, but I'm going to. So let's talk about like standing and sitting desks. Yeah, actually. There's no freaking different. No, I'm sitting at my standing desk right now. Um, Yes. And so why this matters is because how your body feels right now is a direct reflection of how you move your body most throughout the day. So that's, um, you know, moving about your room. That's how you're sitting. That's how you're standing. Um, Just the way you carry your body is Mm -hmm. how it feels. And this is even down to like, oh, this one hip feels tighter than the other. And so this, my lower back hurts on this side. It is how you stand or how you sit, right? So posture is what we're talking about. Yes. Um, So I think there's this idea too, where if I get a standing desk, like everything will be fine. It'll just like fix the problem. And then you start standing and you're like, my back still hurts because we haven't, yeah, we haven't addressed the underlying issues going on with your posture in the first place. Right. So good posture. You want to get your head right on top of your shoulders, your shoulders right on top of your ribs, your ribs to sit right on top of your hips, and all of that to be right on top of your knees and your feet. Ideally, your feet are pointing forward-ish. I used to say they have to be super straightforward, but it doesn't really have to be that way. So forward-ish. And everything that you do that can get you closer back to that midline so that that quote unquote, ideal posture is your resting place is going to be better. So if you're standing, you're in your best posture. If you're sitting as I am right now, I'm in my best posture. When I start to slouch, then things start to hurt. It's just Mm -hmm. the way gravity works, right? Because we are, we're constantly working against gravity and anything we can do to set ourselves up in the most economic way really is like the most efficient way uh, for our muscles and our connective tissue and our bones and our joints to be held is in our best posture. Right. So if the, you know, the question is standing versus sitting, I will say the benefit of standing. And I know that you do this is that you're yeah. able to generate your force from the ground up right? And use your entire body um, rather than just having to use your arms and your shoulders. So it's a lot easier, for, again, if we're thinking of like a mechanical or like energy right. efficient way to do standing. Also, um, as estheticians, we lean over a lot. 
Mm-hmm. So we, we do a lot of leaning. And I found that as an esthetician, when we, when you lean, when you're seated, you just tend to slouch a lot more and you get this like rounded back, your neck gets played out. You have like, you have these, you have these problems with your body. When you're standing, it is harder to slouch over a person. You just tend not to as much. You, you will have better posture standing. You also move around the room more, which as an esthetician, estheticians have this idea that we should have this economy of motion, right? That we should be still in our treatment rooms, that we should not be moving. We should sit in a spot. We should just move just to like get the product. We should not make noise and move around too much. And I'm I'm all about being quiet. Like I believe in quietness in that room, but that does not mean I don't move around. My treatment room is set up so that I walk around as much as possible because movement is so important to keeping blood circulating, to keeping the body moving, and it stops pain, plain mm-hmm. and simple. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, your body was designed to move, so you got to you gotta keep moving. Yeah. I, I will say it's entirely possible to have terrible posture in standing, though. <laughs> I mean... Yes, you can. I I found that for me, I like to keep, um, I like to keep like a yoga brick or something so I can kind of like move my one foot up because I like to have like a staggered stance. Mm -hmm. It is harder for me to be evenly stanced because I do kind of like throw a hip out as I stand for like an hour. I I will get very bad posture if given the opportunity. I also like to have my body very close to a wall because I can kind of lean back on that wall just a little bit. Like you would Mm -hmm. like a standing chair Mm -hmm. and I like lean back on that wall a little bit give myself a little bit of a break. Um, and since I had a knee surgery, I do like to have a chair around because if I do get a tired knee, I will sit a little bit. Mm-hmm. Which you brought up a fantastic point too, which is variety, Yeah, right? Of it's, it's not that sitting is worse than standing or standing is better than sitting. It's just having different positions to find yourself in throughout the day. So even, you know, for my workstation, I will raise it up and I will stand. I will put one leg up just like you're talking about, mm-hmm. you know, change my foot position. If I'm going to go do a post on Instagram, I'll literally lay on the floor with my phone because you were designed to move. So move throughout your day, change up your position and like put enough variety and novelty around you um, so that you can keep changing things up. The one thing too, I want to mention about standing and how it's super different from sitting is that when you're standing, even just the act of like keeping your torso upright, it's easier to do when you're standing because you can use your glutes. You can use your butt to help support you. When you're sitting, your glutes are like asleep. That's just like they, they can't, I mean, try, I'm sitting now and I'm trying to squeeze my butt. It's not the same contraction as it would be if I were standing. No. So it's energetically more efficient to maintain good posture when you are standing. You can slouch when you're standing though. Trust me. I do it all oh, the yeah. time and I got to catch myself. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Especially as hypermobile people, we will. We, yes. will, we will slouch into our hypermobility very simply. Like, oh my God, my elbows are like in the opposite direction now. <laughs> yeah, my knees are slayed backwards and just holding me upwards. That yeah, feels I, uh, great. I know, I totally get it. Uh, so one of the things I want to talk about, since Alex did bring up the fact of, you know, making sure that we, you know, move around a bunch is, and that variety is that, you know, we tend to also as estheticians that we have repetitive motion. Right. Mm-hmm. We do the same thing over and over and over and over again. Um, and so one of the injuries that we get is we get these repetitive motion injuries, mm-hmm. you know? So I try not to stack the same thing back to back to back to back to back. And that is one of the reasons why I always did continue to keep um, waxing on my schedule, even if it was more limited, because it did keep me moving in a different way. It kept my arms doing something different. It kept me from doing the same facial motions over and over and over again. Right. And a variety of facials has always helped as well. Like I love mm-hmm. my hydrofacial, but I have a couple other facials on the menu because it's just a variety of things that I'm doing something different. It's good for mm-hmm. the mind, but it's also good for the body. Yeah right? Not to do the same motion over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Right. And so many injuries too are, you know, other than, oops, I fell off something and now I'm broken. Mm -hmm. um, They are repetitive stress. Like that's exactly what it is. So 
a hundred percent what you're saying of just doing different things so that you have that variety uh, and change. So it's not like the same stress over and over and over again on your body. And if I am doing the same repetitive motion, so t- a couple of things I think happen, and I'll ask Alex will give her opinion on this. But for me, I found that the the times that I've been injured from repetitive, and it's almost always repetitive things that I'm injured from, it's because I'm overly tired, and therefore mm-hmm. I'm not paying attention to my body mechanics. Right. Mm-hmm. I thrown up my shoulder because I was I'm sugaring and I'm just throwing my shoulder instead of like being careful on the catch. Right. Just not being careful Two, you know, it's because I I booked things too close together and I didn't make sure I did stretching and rest in between. And though that stretching for me and rest in between is so important. And whether that rest is I took a small break, which I don't do, but I actually like book something in between. Right. So I book something different in between uh, and I do stretches. I do stretches between almost every single client. It's really, really important to me that I do stretches between clients. So they're in the bathroom. I'm stretching something. Something's happening. Whether I'm rolling something, I'm stretching something, I'm activating something, whatever. Something is happening for like two to three minutes. Um, and then the other thing that has usually happened is because I was just not mindful of what I like, what I was doing while I was doing that, while I was doing the motion. So I, you know, I got like thoughtless. <laughs> and so I, I was doing the motion, but I wasn't doing it as precisely as I needed to. And I injured myself because like I was pulling up on a thumb and it wasn't in the right posture. It wasn't in the mm-hmm. right position. Mm-hmm. Right. And our positioning is so important and we don't think about it. We don't think about our positioning is so important. Like you don't put your wrists up. And if you were trained that you weren't supposed to put your wrists up, I'm sorry, but you never put your wrists upwards if you're massaging because it's bad for your wrists. And there's just some things that, you know, you're not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I was hoping you would bring up your sugar shoulder. Uh, My sugar shoulder guys. So if you sugar out there, I want to, I want to hear from you about if you have a sugar shoulder injury. Sugar need, shoulder is a real thing. We need to talk about your sugar shoulder. So something that's interesting that I think in what you just said is this idea too of like having to be extra careful as if like the joint or that area, that body part is like extra fragile. Um, and one way, I think that's an excellent place to start, right? Mm-hmm. Like, let me start of like breaking it up. But then also there's a question, well, what if the type of work I do, if I am a body worker, it is the same every single person, you know, and I don't have the opportunity to schedule something different in between. Mm -hmm. So while breaks are great and like stretching can help, I think the next level to really break you out of that cycle. And this is what I was pushing you to do when we were talking about your sugar shoulder, um, is to start building strength. Yeah. Because having better strength, especially if you are hypermobile, will give you more like for lack of a better term, like wiggle room. And right. Control. So, yeah. I, I think of control. it. Well, here, if you uh, think of your mobility and your ab- ability to move as like a bank account, right. Mm-hmm. Every time you do the self care things of building strength and working on mobility, things, doing therapy, ball work, massage, whatever it is, you are putting money into this body savings account, right? So yes. that when you do that weird thumb move, it might feel weird. But you're like, Oh, let me not do that again, but it doesn't injure you. Right. And so what we want to do is like, and that strength is like more valuable yeah. uh, in this account. So that's what I'm saying is like, it, it always felt for me too, when we were working together that you were like, I can't, I can't. And I'm like, I know, but you have like $5 in your body bank right now. And I want you to put some more. And you were like, no, I can't, I can't, I can't. I have like 250 guys. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about this because Alex is 100% right. So, you know, every time Alex is like, Sybil's right all the time. The guys listen to Alex. <laughs> Alex is 110% right because when I started, okay, I had to not be doing anything to actually feel like I could start doing stuff with my shoulder. And this is why, guys, we have such a fear of injury because when we are injured, we cannot work. And your I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. I your body's you. your paycheck. Right. I hear you. So I'd be like, Alex, I can't do that because it hurts when I do it. And I can't injure that shoulder. Like it's already taxed. I can't, I'm afraid to injure it more. I can't do the things you're asking me to do because it already fucking hurts. And you're asking me to tax this shoulder and I've got 250 in the bank. I can't afford to have nothing, but I will straight up tell you that when I finally started doing the fucking work, (laughs) 
It has gotten so much fucking better. It is <gasps> like I have now like probably fifty dollars in the bank for this shoulder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because I started working with it again and I'm like, oh, it like it just doesn't bother me the way it used to do. Do I still get twingy in it? Yeah, because guess what? That shoulder has been has two tears in it that fucking is a bitch. But it doesn't give me the problems that it used to give me. Period. Mm-hmm. And it's because I started to fucking hang and I started to do the exercises she had me do, and it's getting stronger. Is it a million dollars strong? No, I am not young, but it is so much better. <laughs> I it saw this in the out. notes and I was like, right. <laughs> I need to know what happened with the hanging. But yeah, it's so good to hear that, Sybil. I do I know, <laughs> I know. And the hanging is just like, okay, so Alex would be like, Sybil, you need to hang. Are you hanging? I'm like, no. Because also, you guys, hanging is good for grip strength as well. Aww. And like, I'd have trouble with my hands. We all have trouble with our hands. Okay. And I have all kinds of exercises for hands that I do that are like, my God, I do so much hand stuff, but I was having trouble with one of my hands as well. I was having trouble with some of my hand stuff and I started doing all the exercises. I started doing all the, uh, the hanging stuff. I started doing hanging stuff and it was terrible and I hated it, but it worked. Once you get over that hump, then it's not quite so terrible. It was terrible. I will straight up tell you guys it was terrible. It was, it was one of the worst <laughs> things I've ever done for the first like two, three weeks. Yep. Yep. That sounds about and right. Now, now it's okay. Now I'm not going to say I love it. It's not like I love doing it, but it's like worth doing. It's definitely not the sexy fun stuff like no, body maintenance. It's, mm. it's, I mean, it's, I mean, I'd rather clean a toilet. <laughs> I'd rather clean a toilet, but it, it's worth doing. My, my shoulder feels better. My hands, like I don't get tingles and then the way I used to, and my grip strength has definitely gotten better mm-hmm. throughout the, you know, throughout my work. Yes. So when we, when she says hanging, literally hanging, which you can like do. Literally just hanging on something. Just in a doorway, which is yeah, what I was. Holding, holding something with body. Yeah. And just hanging sideways. I, you can hang from a pole above you too, but I just hang sideways to start. Yeah. Right? Just grip something and hang sideways with your body weight. And just having better upper body strength is going to help your hands, your elbows, your neck, your shoulder, like all of the things, the common areas where we have issues will feel so much better when you're a little bit stronger. And that hump, that two to three week period is the worst. So thank you for reminding me of it because once you get over that, then there's not so many debits to the account, right? You just keep putting in, you have that cushion, you don't have the overdraft fees. It's just like so much better. (laughs) It is. It is is much better. And like I said, guys, it's not, it's, it's still not something you're like, this is magic. You know, it's not like other exercises where you're like, I feel so much better now that I do this. No, but you're like, you just do it. And you're, you're like, when you're working, you feel better and you're glad you did it. Yeah. I mean, I will say you do feel better right away. There's that like three week period, like I was saying, but, um, you know, like for me, this, for, here's an example. Like for me this morning, I did my workout and I knew I was going to be doing some like lunges and squats and stuff like that. And my Mm -hmm. knee felt like kind of weird the other day. And I was like, I already know that like my quads are really tight. So I said, cool self, let's roll out our quads. Doesn't have Mm -hmm. to take a long time. Um, It's never going to be on the cover of a magazine or like, uh, I mean, I put on Instagram and it looks like the most boring thing ever, (laughs) but then everything after not only feels better, but is more efficient for my body because I'm in a better position to be able to do it. So it all just is like, it all feeds into itself and you need to stand taller and like for the love of all things, holy, please hang from stuff. Just, just do it. Just hang from (laughs) things and it will feel so much better. I promise you. That's your next shirt, by the way, hang from things. Hang for the love of all things, holy, just hang, just just hang from things. It's true. It's true. She does work on trying to get people to hang from things. Um, And besides hanging from things, we are going to talk about things that you can do in your room to well i mean you could put a hang something to hang on in your room that would be good anything you can do in your room to make your room more acceptable for you to be in it so something to hang on would be great you know and i mean alex does it have to be something to hang hang on or can you grip it and like have Mm -hmm. like a like something like towel or something to hang yourself like from yeah i mean all the different variations of carrying heavy 
carrying things that are heavier Heavy. than okay. your phone and your iPad, because those things just keep getting lighter and lighter and lighter. And our hands, <laughs> like, I feel like they're going to just like wither away to like these little twigs and then they're just going to hurt all the time, but we need strength. So much strength. Gotcha. All right. Cause I know that one of the things that I, that I started doing is I use a yoga, I use a, one of the, like the yoga strap mm-hmm. and I just, cause you know, listen, aesthetic rooms, we don't want to have like ugly bars and stuff hanging around. Right. It's you can beautiful. Use a door frame, talking about. Right. So you can use a door frame totally yep. to just hang on. Um, but also I will use like a strap and I'll put it around like the base of a chair and I'll put my legs on the chair and then I'll, I'll pull on, on it at the same time that I'm sitting on the chair because ah, I see what you're saying. Right. And so I find that for me, that gives me double duty when I'm in, the, cause I'm trying to find stuff sometimes to do when I'm in the office in like a three to five minute period between clients. Right. Where, you know, I'm trying to get like double duty stuff in sometimes. Right. Right. So that is fantastic, especially like, we'll just go all in as like an activation for the back of your body, which you definitely need to like have that good posture, but there isn't like, it's not the same as hanging. It's not enough body weight. Exactly. And you know, the, the yoga strap is like kind of thin. There's no substitution that, for hanging you because just gotta this hang. is what every single person will say they'll be like like but oh but i'm holding on to this thing and th- this is what's working so you heard it from alex it's not the same not just from me <laughs> <laughs> it's not go to the other stuff but honestly like if you just started and this is my challenge to you like mm-hmm. just start hanging for let's say 30 seconds is the goal for each arm. Um, mm-hmm. and you can break that up however you want. Five second increments, 10 second, 15, 20, like whatever. Um, start there and see how that goes. Do it once a day. Maybe you do it at the start of the day. Maybe you do it middle day and it doesn't matter, but just try that and see what you find because also what you're going to find, I already know, um, other things are going to come up, right? Yes. Other yes. things are going to come up and then you'll be like, shit, I didn't, I didn't know this was going on. It's like, okay, cool. But now you have a better idea of where to work and what to work on. And that's the next step. Oh, and yeah. so this action is going to get you to what the next best step is for your body. And the best place to start is just, just hang from stuff, please. There you go. So you have it here. Start hanging. Number one thing, exercise, thing from homework, just hang, yes. hang on things. And then I'm going to talk about like your floor. Yes. I am right now in a room with slate floors. So I have forgotten what this is like because when I built all of my spas out, I had cork floor and cork is lovely and wonderful on your feet. I walk around in my bare feet. So I just have like usually socks on with bare feet, feet, it keeps my room um, quiet. Speaking of ways to be quiet in your room, don't wear shoes and wear socks because it's quiet. You're like little mice just walking around quietly. (laughs) You're just very, very quiet. And I have forgotten how terrifying hard floors are on your entire body. Literally, my knees are aching just thinking of that. Yeah, no, every single joint in my body hurt but within like two hours. I was like, yeah. I'm going to die and I wish I was dead. <laughs> so people, the things you stand on are the most important things in that room for how your body feels at the very end of the day. Yep. Okay. So get something soft to stand on, even if it's just like a squishy pad, like the little gym pads that they get for like the floors where you stand. It Uh doesn't even have to be where you walk, but if the places that you're standing, whether it's your waxing or your checkout or whatever, get a squishy pad, get something nice for yourself to stand on. Okay. Um, The next thing you're going to do is your bed is is like the most important piece of equipment in your office. And I have... Right now, a kind of sketchy bed that I'm using in the office I'm in. I don't control the up and down super well. But the height that bed is in is so important to where, how your posture is. Yep. Right? So Alex was talking about, she's like, how you stand, how your posture is, is important. So if your bed isn't in the right height and you're like finding that you're like kind of squishing down, you're you're leaning funny, you know, if you have to contort your body to work on a client, that is a contort that you're making like is that a, is that a word contortment you are contorting yourself contortion contortion you're contort- I yeah <laughs> i have no idea this is words i'm creating now i'm you like consortium it's totally different word 
<laughs> you're contorting your body for clients all day long. And that is repetitive. Yeah. In proper movement. Yeah. And maybe what you do is like bring a friend in and like figure out where, cause I, I know you thought of this is like, where does their head need to be for me yeah. to be in my best position? So like when they lay down, if they're not at this part, let me ask them to scoot up the bed so that, you know, just by looking, are they in the best place for me to do my job? And if that answer is no, then you make adjustments. Right. And stop being afraid to ask people to move for you. So when people get on the bed, if they are not in a place that's good for you, just be like, hey, can you move back? Can you move forward? Can you move sideways? D- don't be afraid. You need that person to be in the right space. And once they've done it once or twice, they know exactly where to lie down. They have, mm-hmm. they have trained themselves. So if you are if you have not trained them, that is your responsibility. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, and training them. Yeah. It takes the the burden off you to like be constantly checking them every time. And also maybe they'll start asking, Hey, is this okay? Right. And they want you to be comfortable. So yes. don't be afraid when people are like, Oh, but I don't want to bother them. Listen, that client wants you to be happy, giving them a treatment when you're in pain, it, it comes through your body. They will know that you are not feeling comfortable. Your hands get tense. Your body gets tight. It comes through you. You will get grumpy. Pain creates unhappy people. Plain and simple. Yeah. Pain is like a really not fun third wheel. (laughs) Yeah. So when you are feeling good, your body is happy. You can do your job longer, better, and more efficiently. So think about all of those things when you are making those choices for yourself. All right. So please ask your clients to just help you out. They're not going to be like, bitch, I don't want to move on this bed. And if they <laughs> are, you should fire them as a client. Right? Yeah. No, I had Nils in my new space. I had Nils come in. That's my man. And he was like, he's like, I don't know if I'm really comfortable here. And I was like, I don't really care. <laughs> I really asked the said, I'm like, I don't really care. You will get comfortable there. Once I start massaging you, you're just going to fall into the bed. It's going to be fine. And when we finished, he was like, you're right. I was fine. And I was like, yes, you were. I, you know, I, I never really believed in the power and importance of the bed until we did the Russian massage thing. And I was like, this bed sucks. Like my back is killing me. Are we done yet? <laughs> I know. So Alex, um, Alex has had, I have a beautiful Oak works bed. So I have a, a modular, it's called a modular Olympic Oak works bed. It is worth a bed every that, penny. <laughs> yes. It is worth every penny. I think they're like $3,500 now and it is hydraulic. It bends in every ergonomic shape possible. And it goes up and down in micro movements. It's super quiet when it does that. It was worth every penny I spent on it. Alex, when she came and did my my uh, model f- for my Russian massage, we were on just regular, you know, regular massage beds. Travel bed. Yeah, massage beds. They're like the devil. No, I'm like I'm feeling the pains just thinking about it. <laughs> right. And you know, you can put toppers and stuff on them, but they're still like very, very flat. And even when you like put pillows under people's legs and stuff, it's still they're not no. as cushy. No. You know. So think about all those things when you're spending money on your space. Your bed is my opinion is the most important thing you spend money on. Not your wallpaper, mm-hmm. not your decorations. Not the marble bed. wallpaper. No, it's the bed because the client spends time on it and it actually keeps your body healthy. Yeah. I want to just touch back upon to the floor mats that you mentioned. If yeah. like going shoeless isn't something that you're interested in, uh, pay attention to your footwear. So if mm. you have, you know, plantar fasciitis, knee pain, calf tension, and you are wearing slides all day, every day, try a shoe with a back and it's going to make a big difference. Mm, there you go from Alex. There you are. Yeah. Um, I know that I'm a huge clog wearer otherwise. And I know many people are like clogs are the devil, but I do like a good clog, <laughs> but I do wear mostly barefoot. I'm, I'm barefoot yeah. 90% of my time, which isn't good for everyone. It's totally not like you got to do what you got to do to make your feet feel happy. Cause joy comes from the bottom up. Like mm-hmm. honest to God, your feet are in pain. You are not a happy person. It is so hard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Um, let's see. I wanted to talk about the like things that you can do in your office that have to do with your, to, to minimize pain that are about the modalities in your office. So we Mm. as estheticians have tools in our office that help us. Oh yes. Right. So, you know, Alex, what is that little blanket thing that you wish you had? Oh, one of those like, um, infrared sauna blankets. 
Yeah. Almost every esthetician has one of those guys. And guess what? They help reduce pain and inflammation. Yep. Yep. Oh. Right? We also have the lights. So if you're in pain, you should be using that. You, yes. You know, we are the worst at like using our own tools. LED, our LEDs reduce inflammation and pain. Our microcurrent reduces inflammation and pain and reduces lymphatic, helps our lymphatic drainage. You know, I mean, I'm all for all the stuff we have. A lot of you have CBD. Why aren't you rubbing it on yourself? I have something <laughs> called the Joblu. You can rub that on yourself if you carry yep. that product. Um, you know, we forget that we have all of this stuff and we're just like, oh, I just don't use it. I just don't. I'm just going to have pain forever. And also like all that stuff is fantastic, but it's more passive things. So the hanging and yes. the all strengthening. We started with all that. Non-negotiable. You still got to do that. CBD is not going to replace it. hundred percent because that's, that's just to kind of minimize like the, the pain that's right this second and to help all that. Um, and I want to talk about the fact that I am not a huge proponent of ice for like People are like, well, I ice every night. So this is what the, Alex, Alex saw this on my little li- my little list. <laughs> and I was like, so every esthetician hears this. When you first come out of school, they're like, well, every night go home and just ice your wrist for 15 minutes. Like ice your hands for 15 minutes every night. And I'm like, what the fuck? First of all, if you need to ice your hands every night for 15 minutes, you are doing your job wrong. Okay. Second of all, nothing should have to be iced for 15 minutes. Well, icing is like... The research is kind of nebulous about icing, and there's no evidence that it actually penetrates to where you want it to go. Um, It does numb things. It reduces pain topically. Yes. So I'm trying to think of like a metaphor for this too. It's almost like um, your house is on fire. And you're like, okay, well, I'm just going to take like this hose and I'm just going to spray this corner and I'll come back tomorrow and I'll spray this corner as well. It's like, okay, but also you have like a gas leak inside. Like what if we just like turn the gas leak off so that Mm -hmm. the fire could go out? So ice, I like, I am not a fan of icing because it just, it doesn't do anything. You're going to be better served long-term and be able to get out of that injury and pain cycle by actually doing something to resolve the pain in the first place. Yes. Okay. So Alex and I do see this. We, we do agree yeah. on this because yes. I, I am a full firm believer that like people who ice all the time, I'm like, you are just masking yes. a problem that is there. And you're like, I, I ice. And I'm like, okay, why are we icing so much? I mean, if you're like, listen, I'm in a lot of pain. I need to ice. And it's like, makes me feel good. Awesome. I'm glad that you did that. Cause it made you feel good. But can we do something else to stop that pain? The pain point, right? Because I'm, I'm, that's like, we're going to get another one. So you have a client coming in she's like, I have really bad acne. I put makeup on it every day. Right. And that's like, how I'm solving this problem. Acne is caused by your makeup. So right. let's talk about that. Right. So you're doing something that's making your, your, you know, you need ice all the time. Can we please stop that problem? Awesome. Yeah. Right. So let's make sure that we just handle, handle those issues from the start. And there's so many ways to do it. And Alex, once again, Alex specializes in this. I've worked with her. I've worked with somebody else. I do all kinds of stuff for this. We're very good at these things. There's so many things that you can do. Start with hanging. Yes. Yes. It is so important. You know, it seems so silly, but it is so important. Yeah. And um, I think, I actually think that that is That's what we want to talk about. Well, also, we are in the process of putting together a esthetician specific uh, like body guide to help you maintain and strengthen your body in the best way possible. Um, So if that sounds like something where you're like, "Uh, yes, please, uh, we want to hear from you. Like, what do you want it to have? What are you struggling with body wise right now? So that we can make sure that we include all that. Yeah. What injuries, what injuries or what grouchy things talk to you? You know, because I know what Alex has learned is nobody's like, I have injuries. I have pain. You're like, I just have a grouchy blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, this kind of hurts a little bit. It just bothers me a little bit. Right. I mean, I just have a sugar shoulder that doesn't let me like pick up my arm at the end of the day. Oh, who needs to? (laughs) I mean, I just can't pick it up. Whatever. Like, I don't feel my fingers. I drop brushes a lot. Whatever. It's fine. It's fine. So yeah, we want to hear because we want this guide to be everything you need and more. I know. I'm so excited about it. When I told Alex we were doing this episode, I'm like, Alex, this is the jam. I'm s- I am want to help every single person out there. 
solve these problems because this is what she does. And she helped me. She's helped everyone I know. So she's helping my mom. I just found out. My mom's yeah. like, oh, I've been working with Alex. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I like debated telling you or not, but I'm like, oh, this will be fun. <laughs> no, it's like Vegas. Well, you know, I told, so this is what happened. My mom was like, I'm going to get surgery on my wrist for my carpal tunnel. And I was like, you need to go see Alex. I do not want you getting stupid surgery on your carpal tunnel because carpal tunnel is not a thing you need surgery on. You just need to see Alex. And she did. And she mm-hmm. says it's really helping her. So I'm really happy. Yeah. And uh, like carpal tunnel surgery is like not evil, but for many people, you don't actually need carpal tunnel Well, that's tunnel what I said. Surgery. I said, it's just not something you really need. Like go, like go see Alex first before, yes. once again, a lot of times go see somebody first before you let somebody cut into you when often you don't need somebody to cut into you yet. Mm-hmm. Right. A lot of times it's not, I mean, surgeons, as I always say, surgeons like to cut. Cowboys with scalpels is what my mom calls them. It's exactly. so true. They just, they're like, whoa, we're just going to cut that thing. I don't know why, but we will. <laughs> <laughs> but when you need something cut, like they're the bomb. They're totally God, the bomb. Yes. I mean, I have a whole, I have a, a knee that functions because I had some dude who's like, I can put that back together. I'm so yeah. psyched to He's cut into that about and, it. and just staple that crap back together. So they're little needles. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that I'm, I'm I, magic that my knee functions is magical to me to this Just day. Like magic. So yeah, hit us up on social um, or leave us a, a message in our box. You can find the show on Instagram at Skin Fessional. Um, I hope you realize that it's Skin Confessional. Like, so like that's how you spell it, right? Skin, skin fessional. fessional. Yeah, because apparently I was at a I was at a hydrofacial event. Esti Palooza, which was amazing. And apparently the very first conference back in the Aria Hotel. So they were super excited oh. to have us. I know. Magical swag, guys. Hold on, I'm putting my favorite piece of swag on right now. And some sweet headphones, y'all. You can't see right? them unless yeah, you can see I got them. Some magical swag from Hydrofacial. They are a magically good company. I really, hold on, it's back here. I love my Hydrofacial. I talk about them all the time. But we were we were there and they were just having like skin. What? No. Skin <laughs> who? Like, I'm telling people about skin professional and they're like, how do you spell that? What is that exactly? And I'm like, I, I didn't know it was so hard to spell. You know what you need? I don't have it here. I made a little like square of the podcast art as like a business card. And I was just like giving that out to people. Clearly that's what I need. Cause well, I don't carry business cards because who carries those these days? You carry but- podcast cards because people cannot spell apparently they cannot so i will know that next time but i was like i didn't know this was so hard so guys it's based on the idea of skin Skin confessions confessions. that's why we start with confessions and so it's skin professional (laughs) yeah anyways that's confessional yeah exactly long story short um or you can send it directly to sybil at your skin fitness expert um or you can hit me up at holla for mala yes or you can call us on our skin professional box which is old school I have a box but, too. You know, um, and <laughs> apparently I'm still getting Scopla phone calls. Um, 818 473 5277. So, guys, this has been fun. Until mm-hmm. next week, keep your secrets to yourself. Unless you're telling us. Okay, bye. Bye.